Yes, hello everyone, welcome. I'm really glad to be here today. It's my first time at JFocus and also in Stockholm and Sweden and I really love it so far. The, so uh, I'm happy to be here. And I'm happy that you are here too, because apparently you want to learn something about remote pair programming tools, because that's what we're talking about today. And I'm really happy that so much of you, uh, so many of you are interested in that. But before we start, we'll do a little game. Uh, it's called Bingo. I think everyone know, knows Bingo. And it's the remote pair programming version. You'll see here, this is your bingo sheet. And it has all kinds of quotes that I've heard during a pair programming session online using screen sharing. So with a tool as team, uh, Teams or Zoom or whatever. And in here, you're going to check if you've heard those quotes. And if you have a row of three in any direction, you have a bingo. So when you uh, take a look at those quotes, I will explain some, some ab about them, uh, which I have used or, or heard before. So I think, can you see my screen is now the standard quote you hear before every session. Um, and unfortunately, it's still necessary <laughs> sometimes. But also the scroll down and scroll up is something I hear all the time. Because someone is going to the code and you want to read something and they go too fast. And you're like, no, no, up. No, not that far up, just a bit down. And that's like the constant hassle to find the, the row you're interested in. So, and also uh, zoom a bit is because, for example, I'm using a monitor, but my colleague is working on his really small laptop and then he can't read the code. So I have to zoom or use presentation mode. But yeah, I don't really like that. So now you've had the time to read all the quotes. Who of you has a bingo? bingo. <laughs> okay, I think there are more bingos than, uh, <laughs> than half of you. So that's great, because then this talk is really relevant for you, because I have alternatives that save you from all those quotes, and you can just focus on programming together. Okay, so a little bit about myself. I'm Kaya Weers, I'm from the Netherlands. I work as a Java developer at Ordina, and I'm currently having an assignment at the National Police. So uh, in my spare time, I like to do sports, uh, soccer or snowboarding. Uh, if it's only good weather, I ride a motorbike. And I love animals, especially cats and dogs. So today we'll talk about pair programming or remote pair programming. But first, let's go one step back and look at pair programming in general. Because who of you have ever done pair programming, either remote or in the office? Okay, that's a lot of you. Cool. <laughs> that's really great to see. But for the couple people that maybe are not that familiar with it, I will shortly explain what it is and what are the benefits. So normally when you were in the office back years ago, um, you were sitting next to each other behind one laptop, having one keyboard and one mouse and creating software together, having discussions. And um, I think that's really important, especially now. Because during a pair programming session, you learn a lot. You learn from each other. You learn about what your colleagues' uh, views are about software architecture. Um, you learn about maybe a new um, API or function that you didn't knew before. So you'll learn all about the technical part. But also you'll learn about different parts of the code. Because usually when you work in the code, you'll see that people still have like that comfort zone part in the code where they usually work and some colleague that's more an expert in another part. And during such a session, you will also see different parts of the code and maybe also different parts if you're working in the back end, sometimes you will maybe see the front end. And besides that, it's really good for yourself to learn. It's also really efficient because I think that's what most people who don't like pair programming say. It's not efficient. You're working with two people on the same part of the code. Why would you do that if you can work separately? But I think that in the end, it will really save you a lot of time because uh, you learn more. So the code will get better and has less bugs. But even if there's a bug, the chances that you're able to find it and solve it are way higher because you know about more parts of the code. You have more technical knowledge. And also what I think is a really big benefit is you can maybe change the review process. So now one colleague is working solo on the code and after tons of work, it's a pull request and someone else can say, well, I think this approach, it doesn't fit well. And you start all over again, or you have to go to the pull request 
um, from code you don't really get into and it's a lot of boring work. And I think that if you already do a pair programming session together, you can think about if it's really needed to do that kind of reviews anymore. So that's why I think in general it's really good. And in this whole period of working at home, where you have less contact with your colleagues because you're not hearing the discussions behind your back in the office, uh, it's way more important to keep in contact. And this is just one of the ways to, to keep have discussions together. So what we're going to do today is look at the alternatives and how we're going to do it in the Tour de Remote Pair Programming. In this race, we will look at four teams, and that are the four tools. And why four? Because I had to make a pre-selection to fit it in this session. And I looked at tools that are available to use inside your IDE. So there are a lot of tools that just are an extensive way of, of screen sharing with some control options. But I like to keep it as close to normal programming in your IDE, because it's just way more convenient to use, um, use it in the way you normally should, not feeling that it's different. So that's why I choose the ones that are inside your IDE. And also I choose the ones that are available for IntelliJ. So I think a lot of here are Java developers and a lot of Java developers use IntelliJ, including myself. So I didn't want it not to be possible to use it in there. So in the five stages, we'll look at different aspects of the tools and compare them and every stage we have a winner, winner and in the end of the race we have one winner of the tour but also we have two jerseys to give away and the jerseys are about a specific use case that one tool is really good at so before we start i have a little side note um, those tools change constantly and that's why i put a version number uh, on top of every tool so you know which version i use to compare it with so let's go to our first team, Team Code Together. So Code Together is a plugin you can use in uh, Eclipse, JetBrains IDEs, and Visual Studio Code. So as you see in here, it's used in IntelliJ. And before we start, if I say the host, then I mean the person who starts a pair programming session. The other ones are the participants. So in here you will see the IDE of the participant. And let's check. In here, you have the Code Together tab, and that's the place where the host goes to start a session. When they start a session, it will generate a URL, and that URL can be used by participants to join either via their IDE or via the browser. So once they join, this is what they see. They completely move to the project of the host. So it will feel like as if it was their project. Um, and if they're in there, they can do whatever you do normally. So you, in, what you see here is that someone selects the Spring application text. You will see that from each other. But you can also just type and create the code, but also go to different files. So that's in short, go together. We'll get to the rest later. Team Duckly um, is also usable for your IDE, of course. You can use it for the JetBrains IDEs and Visual Studio Code. And also here you have the tab from Duckly where the host starts a session. After you start a session, it will generate a URL, uh, which can be used by participants to use in the browser or in their IDE. But also, if you have created a team, everyone in that team can always join if they see there's a session available. And um, yeah, also in here, you can make selections, change the code, go to different files. Um, the next team is Team Code With Me. Code with me is a bit different. It used to be an IDE or a plugin, but it's created by JetBrains and only usable for their IDEs. And now they've already bundled it inside the IDE. On here, you have that small place where you see two persons. And that's the place where the button for code with me. And as a host, you go there, you start a session and it will generate the URL. But with that URL, participants are asked to download the IntelliJ client. And the IntelliJ client is a lightweight version of IntelliJ, which is coupled to the code of the host. And what you see here is that IntelliJ client. So you see that it looks a lot like regular IntelliJ, but it ha just has some less functionality and it has the coupling. So here you will move to the code of the host. Um, 
And as you see, I also have the video calling. So we'll get to that later and all the options to go through files and make changes. Our la last theme is Git Live. Git Live differs from the others that it's not a tool purely for pair programming. It's way broader. So it's meant for all day collaboration uh, with other developers. And pair programming is just a part of it. And um, what it does is that you can always see what changes other people make. And then it's not just their push changes, but also the changes that are not even committed and on other branch. So this is really usable if you're um, in maybe a bigger project and you want to have a better view of what others are working on. So for myself, currently the project at the police, we have 15 teams working on one repository. And that's a lot. <laughs> so this would then be really usable because you you get notification if someone's also working in that file. So then I can contact and see if we're not doing the same thing or that we're going to have uh, problems merging. So I want to hide. Does it work? Okay, it's freezing. But in the uh, left bottom corner, you see Git Live and there are Kaya Weers and Kaya Test. So that are the two users for this of the two collaborators on this repository, your colleagues. And that's also an important thing with Git Live. You can only use it with people who have access to the repository. So if someone's out your, out your project, outside your project or company, they cannot use it. So everyone needs already to be a collaborator. And then you will see them and see what changes they make. And you can ask them to join a pair programming session on your code. And then again, you have the options the other tools have to, to work together in that code. So that's in short the tools. Uh, let's see the stages. So first we're going to look at the coding environment of the participant, uh, then access to the session. So how do you get into the session? But also can you have it more secure by having uh, options to limit the access? Then the third stage is about the pair program options. What can you actually do inside the session? Uh, we will look at the usability and last we'll look at security. So let's start the first stage, which is about the coding environment. So the host is always work working in their own IDE, if this is supported. And then the participants, it differs per tool. So for Code Together and for Duckly, they can work in their own IDE or in the browser. Uh, for Git Live, they can work in their own IDE. And for Code With Me, you can only work in that IntelliJ client, even if you have IntelliJ yourself. So as you see here, the first column is about own IDE. So that's possible for all the tools except for Code With Me, where you have the client. Then the different IDEs supported. So Code Together has the most support. And uh, yeah, at least IntelliJ is everywhere supported. And most of them also support Visual Studio Code. And Code Together and Dougly have the option for the browser. So as you might have expected, this stage is won by Code Together. It has the most options for the IDEs and you can use it in the browser. So this is for now our score. Then the access to the session. So first, how do you get into the session? <coughs> with Code Together and with Duckly, you have the option of the URL, but also a different option to join via team. So in Code Together, this is a paid version and you create a team and with that team, you will always see inside your IDE and you can click on persons to, to ask them to join. In Duckly, um, if you create a team with people, they can always see if you have a session started and they can always join. In the beginning, I was like, okay, that's great because that's really easy. But then I noticed that you create a team based on their email address and not on the project. So if I create a team with my colleagues, and I start a pair programming session in a separate project or maybe a private project or whatever, they can just join <laughs> and I have no option to stop that. So I don't really like that option. And I would say always use the invitation URL. Then you have, then you can only give it to those people you want. Um, yeah, so then in Git Live, we already discussed, you have to be a collaborator of the project and therefore you don't um, invite someone or you invite someone, but you don't use the URL. They just accept inside their IDE. And Code With Me indeed also has the 
your value give to participants to join. And then there's also, okay, I give the URL, but how do I know that the person I give the URL is the person I expect? So in Code Together and Code With Me, if someone joins, you still have to approve him. You have like the key and you can match it and see that you want to have that person joined. And with Code With Me, it's even possible to also kick someone out. I see nice possibilities. <laughs> um, so, but for example, Darkly, where you use the URL, you have no option to verify and no option to kick someone out. So if someone posts a URL on the web, yeah, you might want to stop your session. And so for Git Live, it's all not needed because you have the people in the repository uh, and you accept them or you just invited them yourself. So as you see here, you have the difference between URL and the logon um, that you have to accept. Uh, except for Duckly, and then the settings for the access. access. I'll get one back, then you can see the settings. So in Code Together, there are some settings. For example, if you're allowed to edit or not. Um, and you can also hide files, but you have to do that manually in the settings file. Then for Duckly, the only option you have is if you want to share the whole workspace, a folder or a certain file. And once you're in the setting in the session, you can also mark certain files as hidden. Code with me has a lot of settings. Uh, you can make sure that they're not allowed to edit, but also to use your terminal, the debugging, and in the options you can also um, hide files. So for Git Live, there are not really options, but it also doesn't make sense to hide the workspace they have access to themselves. So back to the overview, uh, you'll see I marked code together and luckily has some settings and uh, code with me won this stage together with Git Live. Why would you think? But Git Live has less settings, but it's also already really secure because only people who should see the code are allowed to see it. So it, it doesn't need those settings. So I think code with me is the one who's most flexible um, with a lot of options and Git Live is less flexible, but really secure. Let's see what it does for our score. Okay, it's getting close, but go together first. Stage three, I think this is the most important stage because this is really what it's all about. So what can you do inside the session? So in all the tools, you have multiple options to work together like you would do in the office on one keyboard, one mouse, pretend that you really have one laptop and more work in parallel. So that if the host is in one file, you can check another file and even make changes in different files at the same time. So they all have that option, only they explained or their implementation is different. And then all the changes you make will always go, go to the local host changes or the, the changes of the host. So if they commit, it will be always on the name of the host. Uh, it also does make sense because otherwise you're committing separate uh, lines of code which should be combined in and having one session. But that's, that's the same for all the tools, you don't have an option. So let's first let look at code together. In code together, you move completely to the code of the host. So as soon as you press the URL, it will open a new window completely in the project of the host. And then what, for op what options do you have? So in code together, they called cursors. And if you have your own cursor, you can work separate from the host. If you share a cursor, then you're working together and following the host everywhere where they go. And uh, with following the e how they created it, you go to another file if the host goes. But if you want to do something for yourself in a different file, you get like 10 seconds or so before you're moved to the host. So you can still do a short check, but in the end you work together. So, and if you're working on your own, you're just, you can work in whatever file you want. And when you want, you can move back to the host to work together. So if you choose to work together, there are two options you have. The strict pro programming or dynamically. And in the strict version, um, you really assign who is the host. So you have to say to that person, okay, you're the host now, everyone follows you. And that role will only move persons if the host does that. So that's the strict version. In the dynamic version, 
uh, code together looks, okay, who's most active? Who do I expect to be the host or the person who's making the most of the code? Um, and it works pretty good because it's not shifting every time you move or you write code. Um, but in the end, if it sees that someone else is wor working more, it will move there. And that person has the rights of the host. So that are the options we have in code together. Now let's see Duckly. So what different in Duckly is you don't move completely to the code of the host. You also stay in your own code. So if you are in the um, session of Duckly, you don't have a new window that opens, but it's in the project you're already working on yourself. And as you see, there are the demo application and another one you can't read it completely, but also demo application.java. And the one is from your own code and the other one is from the host code. And in the shared files, you can see the file structure of the host. So you can browse the files and go to any file you want. And then the options for the pair programming uh, are just as simple as follow or don't follow. So if you follow the host, you will move everywhere the host goes. If you don't follow, you'll work on your own. That's as easy as it is in Duckly. Then Git Live uh, looks similar to Duckly. You also stay also in your own code. You will have them next to each other. But the more unfortunate thing is that they don't have the separate um, file structure from the host. So if you want to work on your own, you cannot open any files because you don't have a view for it. So only the, the files that are opened by the host before, they will be in your uh, top bar. You can open those and not the other ones. So that's a bit inconvenient. And it also, also has the option to follow or not follow um, to work separate or, or alone. So then we have code with me. Um, as in code with me opens that IntelliJ client, you will completely move to the code of the host. So there you will just go to the regular um, folder structure to find files. And uh, code with me has some options. So you can jump to someone. That means you're just going once to where that person is working on. Uh, follow, which is you go wherever the host is going or the person you're following. And a full sync mode. That's a bit like the dynamically pro pair programming from code together, but then like more quickly because you're constantly moving where someone else is typing. So you pretend to have one keyboard and one mouse. And if someone is typing, the other one shouldn't because there's one keyboard. Um, I think if you use this option, I think it's really usable, but you have to make some some kind of agreements before you start to say, okay, you're now in the lead or I will change something. But I think you will always have also a call open um, so you can still talk to each other. Let's see. So we had the four first column about if you can work on parallel. Then let's see if you can run a test or application as a participant. Now, everything runs on the machine of the host. And it makes sense because otherwise you have to make sure that you have, for example, all the dependencies that the host has with their code. Um, so it means that if you as a participant can run the test or application, you're just more starting it and really run it on your own machine. And only in code together and code with me, it is possible to start uh, the test or application. Um, but yeah, why would it really matter if you start it if you can't see anything about it? So then also the logging is important. In code with code together, um, if you run the test as a participant, you only see the end result. So you only see if they are uh, succeeded or not, but you don't see any logging inside your test. And for running the application, you do see the logging, um, which is created that during the starting of the application and running. And in code with me, you can just see everything as the participant, both from the test and both from the running the application. And what's even better, code, to, code with me has the option to debug together. All the possibilities you normally have to debug, uh, put breakpoints, see all the details, go through the code, are also available for the participants. It will just feel like you're doing it on your own code. I think this is really, really helpful because When I do pair programming, a lot of times it's because of a problem, a failing test, something you want to solve together. And then it's really annoying if only one person can see all those details and have to explain it. 
And then port sharing is a feature that is quite new for most of these tools. They introduced it recently. And that means that you can um, share a local port from yourself with the rest. So it can be really useful if you're working on maybe front end or also the back end if you want to make sure that someone else can also test it. Because, um, for example, if you're working on the front end, then all those tools inside your IDE cannot be can't be that they're not enough because you're only working your IDE and you also want to see what's happening. So then the port sharing can be the solution. I think it's already quite obvious, but code with me wins this stage. Um, yeah, it has tons of options. It, it works really smooth and I think the debugging is amazing. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I'll see that now code with me and code together are together first. Now we're going to look at the usability. Are the tools easy to use? Do you have any extras? That's what uh, this is about. So the first thing I checked is, is there code completion? I'm not going to write everything myself in the pair programming session. And luckily all of the tools have it. So that's amazing. <laughs> that was the first thing I want to make sure. And then screen sharing or video calling is now also included in all of those tools. Uh, they added that later on. And I'm not really sure if I would use it because I think most of the time people also already have maybe a call open of their own video calling program. But yeah, if you just start from the session, why not? You can use it. So it differs per tool where you will see the, the call. In uh, Code Together and in Duckly, uh, do I say it correctly? No, in Code Together and in Git Live, you will see it in the browser. So I'll just open the browser for you and there you have the video calling. Uh, in Duckly, you can choose to have it in the browser, which you see here. The browser has, sure, it's readable. It's just about that you know that there's tons of options for Duckly in the browser. Um, but normally, it will also open with a pop-up from your IDE. And only Code with Me has the video calling included in your IDE. And beginning thought, okay, that's cool because I don't have another window. But then. I felt really annoying every time you're programming, seeing someone's face and your own face. And in the end, I still turned it off because it's too much on one screen. But yeah, that, that there are all extra options you don't have to use to calling. It's, it's just an option. So now let's look at Git Live. Because we discussed earlier, Git Live is way more than a pair programming tool. And you can use it for way more things. So what we discussed is, there you can use it to see what other people are doing and uh, what changes they made in other branches. And also you have options to filter it because it can be a lot if constantly in your sidebar you will see every line of code that has changed. And by the way, you can also put it off. You can work offline because I can imagine for myself, <laughs> I was thinking like, I don't want everyone to look at everything I write. Sometimes I just want to write bad code to make it better later on. I don't feel like everyone looking constantly with me. So you can choose to like after a while to, to show it. Um, and also a really good feature of it is that you have, um, you, can, you have notifications for merge conflicts. So if you see here in the, oh, okay. <laughs> if you look here, <laughs> that right, thing in the sidebar, that's the uh, notification for a merge conflict. So in this case, the main method is changed by one person to main method and the, the name <laughs> and to the other one to new name. So that's a conflict and you will see it like this. So you see that just the moment people creating it and not the moment you have a pull request with uh, merge conflicts. I think that's really useful. And you can also combine it with tools like Slack and Jira. There are all tons of integrations. So we discussed the code completion, video calling. Then the refactor. What does it mean? So I was thinking, okay, I want to use a pair programming. Pair programming, I want to program like I normally do. And normally I use like a rename or introduce variable or all those options you have inside your IDE. So I checked, are they possible to use inside those tools too? So in code, 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 to code together, unfortunately, it's not 
um, supported. Uh, I think only one method, some move method is uh, supported. But all the other refactor methods are not yet implemented. So they manually have to make sure that they're available too. So for Dougley, what I could see, uh, all the options I normally have are available too. The same is for Git Live. And in Code with Me, I think maybe half of the options are uh, available. So most of the important ones are, but there are also some that you probably want to use um, that you cannot use, so you have to do it manually. Then the duration of the session. So all those tools have the free and the paid version. And the first um, number you see is the free version, and the second one is the paid version. So for example, go together, you see 60 minutes, that's in the free version, and unlimited in the in the paid version. And all those tools, they have between 30 and 60 minutes in the free version and nearly unlimited in the paid version. I think there are four hours for Git Live, but <laughs> that should be enough for a session. Uh, I think you're quite uh, um, <laughs> bored maybe afterwards. Um, so I think that those numbers, half an hour is quite short. But if you have ultimate, you already have the paid version. So I think you just have to take a look at yourself if you really need the paid version or not and what's available in your company. Then the number of guests also differs for the free or paid version. So the free version is really limited. If you look at Git Live, only one other person, so really a pair programming session, one-on-one, -on -one, is supported. And the other tools, the max is three guests. Uh, so it's only available for small groups. And then, I don't know why they went up to 50 guests <laughs> for a pair programming session if you pay, but maybe it's, it's useful, for example, for a conference, if you want to have more like that you give people only watch rights instead of edit and they can watch with you. Uh, I don't know, but it is possible. And for Git Live, they're currently working on their paid version to have um, code share with multiple people, so that's not available yet. So I think that unless Git Live is more limited in uh, the number of guests, it still wins this stage because of all the options you have beside the pair programming. Let's see what that does. So now it's getting really close between Code of Me and Git Live. Let's go to our last stage about security. So I was thinking, okay, but if we have all our code protected and on servers and all kinds of things to pretend that people look at it. And then we just use the tool and send it to their server and just trust that. So uh, I was checking if they have end-to-end -end encryption um, so that at least they wouldn't be able to see it. And um, they have it except for Git Live. They're, they are still working on it. And then I was looking for on-premise because I don't know if you recognize nice this, but I see that a lot of big companies and governments and they all like to have their code only on their own servers and behind their own firewall and nothing can leave that network. So in that case, those tools won't work because normally it goes via their own, the servers from code together, for example. So that's why some of those tools have now the on-premise version and you can install it on your own servers to make sure that it doesn't leave that server. And that is what GoTogether and Code.me did. So if you have a company that has that as a rule, you have to need that. And the other options are only usable with the cloud services from the tools. So in this stage, we again have uh, GoTogether and Code.me win together. Uh, and they end second together first in this stage. Let's see who is the winner. Pom, pom, pom. It's Code.me, the green bike. So I think it was quite close, only Duckley is a bit behind. And Code With Me won the whole tour. So I think Code With Me is really a valid winner because uh, it's easy to use. It has a lot of options. The debugging is amazing. The only thing is you can only use it in IntelliJ. So if you have a colleague that uses another IDE and really, really want to stay in that, yeah. <laughs> that might be a problem. So then you can look at code together, for example, we have more, more options. So the jersey, what you see here, uh, one's about continuous collaboration. 
So GitLife is the one who won this jersey because you use it all day to see what others are doing instead of only in one session. And the next one is the own IDE jersey, which is won by Code Together. So in Code Together, you have three options of IDEs that are supported, and that's the most from all the tools. So I think there's the biggest chance that you will find the IDE for every colleague, and everyone can just stay in their own comfortable IDE, which can be uh, a huge benefit. So what you will see that we had a winner, we have two jerseys who are different tools, so it still depends on your own situation, which do you prefer. Also, do you need on-premise? Uh, what are the costs? Uh, is there a lot of license in your company? So I think it's important to check out if there's something available that you can use. Because for me, the most important thing is start using one of those tools. Try something else than screen sharing. It will make pair programming way, way nicer, way more fun. And because it's easier, you will do it more often. You would just say, okay, start a session instead of looking at someone who's going to stroll to the code. So you're really collaborating instead of just watching. So that's what I encourage you to do all. Check it out, see if there's a tool going to use it. And also let me know if you find something of those tools that doesn't work, because I'm curious what your experiences are and which tool you like the best. So thank you everyone for being here and if there are any questions uh, let me know. <laughs>